In this video, we're gonna learn about Svelte's reactivity and we'll learn some Svelte syntax along the way. We'll start off with reactive assignments, then we'll learn about reactive declarations, which are variables whose value depends on other variables, and finally, we'll learn how to use reactive statements. Let's get started. Let's start with some static HTML. So I'm gonna add a header that simply tells us the quantity of our cart. Now to make this quantity of five dynamic, let's come up here and add a script tag and define a variable called quantity using let. To use this variable in our template, we simply need to wrap it in single curly braces like this. Now back in the browser, we see Svelte has replaced our template with our variable. Now for the fun part, let's make this variable reactive. I'm going to add a function called add to cart, which adds one to the quantity, and I'll also add a button that will call this function anytime it's clicked. Let's test this in our browser. We see every time our button is clicked, quantity is incremented, and the new value is updated in the browser. So Svelte almost feels like magic here. As we can see, Svelte doesn't use any special APIs to re-render our UI. It uses normal JavaScript assignment via the equal sign to notify our UI to update. This is the core idea behind how Svelte's reactivity system works. Now let's talk about arrays. First, I'll create an inventory array with some items in it, and then we'll render it in an h2 tag. Now let's try to update the array in our add to cart function. Let's say anytime this function is called, we want to add our value of quantity to our array before incrementing it. It might be tempting to call inventory.push and pass in quantity like this, but we see that doesn't cause our app to update. This is because the array.push method in JavaScript actually mutates an existing array, but it leaves the overall array object itself unchanged. So to actually re-render our app, we need to make sure to always use the assignment operator. So if we add inventory equals inventory on the next line, we can see this triggers an update. And a common way to see these two lines written together is like this. These three dots are called the spread operator, and they're a way to copy an existing array into an entirely new one. So the general takeaway here is if you want to update a reactive variable, always use the equal sign. Assignments of properties of arrays and objects work the same way as assignments to the values themselves. Here I've added the object user, which has a single key name, and I'm displaying this name below our inventory. If we add user.name equals lead to our function, we'll see the template update. So as long as we're referencing a value that gets reassigned via the assignment operator, the template will update. But if we ever want to update an entire object or array, we'll need to make sure to remember to update the entire thing rather than using one of JavaScript's mutation-based methods like array.push. Now, Svelte's reactivity is not limited to variable assignments. Often, some parts of a component state need to be computed from other parts. For example, let's write the following. Here, we've declared a new value remaining, which is simply between 10 and our quantity value, and we're displaying it in our HTML. Now, we would expect this value to change as our quantity value is incremented, but if we click Add to Cart, we see that remaining is always 10, even though the value of quantity is changing. This is because remaining is not being recomputed as quantity changes. In order to recompute remaining anytime quantity changes, we need to use reactive declarations, which are marked using a dollar sign followed by a colon. They look like this. Now, remaining is reactive and will be recomputed anytime quantity changes. The syntax here may seem a bit unfamiliar, but it's valid JavaScript, which Svelte interprets to mean rerun this code whenever any of the reference values change. Reactive statements can use as many variables as you'd like. For example, let's add another variable called price and a reactive statement called total costs that multiplies our quantity and price. I'll also add divs to display our new values, and I'll add another button to increase price. Let's add another function called increase price that will add two to price anytime this new button is clicked. Now we see total cost updates anytime quantity changes, but also anytime price changes. And we're not limited to declaring reactive values. We can also run statements reactively. For example, once again using the dollar sign syntax, we can log the value of quantity whenever it changes. Here we see that every time we increment quantity, we're logging the statement. We can even group statements in a block like this. 
Now, again, anytime quantity changes, we not only see the statement being logged, but we also see our alert box. And we can take this one step further and put the dollar sign in front of things like if blocks. Now, every time quantity changes, Svelte checks if it's greater than or equal to 10, and if it is, it will execute the statements within our block. Now that we understand how Svelte's reactivity works, as well as some Svelte-specific syntax, let's continue in the next video with element directives. I'll see you there.